Welcome to another session of electrochemistry. Today we will understand about saturated calomel electrode which is also called as secondary reference electrode. Before we move on, subscribe for more such informative videos if you haven't subscribed yet and uh, tap the like button if you like the video and drop in your comments after watching the video. The saturated calomel electrode comes into the category of metal metal sparingly soluble ion salt electrode. This is called this way because the metal used here is mercury and the sparingly soluble salt of mercury that is mercurous chloride which is placed above this mercury that is at the bottom we have mercury and above that we have the paste of mercurous chloride which is in the solid form which can be clubbed along with mercury or it can be purely used that is only mercurous chloride also can be used the common name of mercurous chloride is calomel that's why we call it as a calomel electrode and for the electrical contact we use a platinum wire which is sealed in a glass tube but we should see that the platinum wire is in contact with the mercury because it's going to act as an electrical contact for mercury and we through the side tube we can fill the main glass tube with saturated KCL solution so that it fills up to the brim or the tip of this side arm. The side arm itself can act as a salt bridge that is when we are coupling with some other electrode we need not use a separate salt bridge. If you immerse this uh, side arm into that beaker of that uh, solution then this itself can act as a salt bridge. So we call it as a saturated KCL solution uh, that is we are using saturated KCL solution that is why we call it as a saturated calomel electrode. In case we have used some other molarity or some other concentration of KCL then it is not called as saturated calomel electrode. We just have to call it as calomel electrode. And this acts as a secondary reference electrode and it is used to determine the standard electrode potentials of various other electrodes. This is very commonly used in laboratories unlike your standard hydrogen electrode. We saw in the last uh, video that a lot of limitations are there. It's very cumbersome to set up a standard hydrogen electrode in a laboratory. So whenever we require a reference electrode, we normally use saturated calomel electrode instead of standard hydrogen electrode. But in order to calibrate this, we may use a, a standard hydrogen electrode which is the primary reference electrode. And we see that the standard electrode potential differs with the concentration of KCL solution. So if we use saturated KCL solution, the standard electrode potential is 0.2422 but if the concentration changes its standard electrode potential also changes so we need to uh, choose it rightly while calculating and this can act as an anode as well as as a cathode depending on which electrode it, it is coupled with during the construction of a cell. So if it is coupled with an electrode which has a higher standard reduction potential than uh, saturated calomel electrode then it will act as an anode for example it can be copper when it's coupled with copper this se acts as an anode so when it is acting as an anode the mercury first gets oxidized by releasing electrons it forms mercurous ions and these mercurous ions combines with chloride ions which is present in the saturated kcl solution to form mercurous chloride so the overall anodic reaction here is mercury clubs with or combines with chloride ions to form mercurous chloride releasing electrons. So it's a oxidation reaction when it acts as anode. And how do we represent this half cell? Why we call it as a half cell? We are representing only for this electrode, not the complete cell. So mercury is in contact with platinum for the electrical contact. So platinum comma mercury, it's in the liquid form. So in brackets, you write uh, liquid and Hg2Cl2, mercurous chloride is in the solid form. So in brackets, we put so, so yes and a vertical line KCl solution, saturated KCl solution is above Hg2Cl2. So that is also represented. This is how we represent the half cell. And when it acts as a cathode, that is when it is coupled with an electrode which has a lower standard reduction potential than calomel electrode, it acts as a cathode. So mercurous chloride first dissociates to form mercurous ion 
and chloride ions and this mercurous ions gains the electrons to form mercury and the overall reaction is Hg2Cl2 mercurous ion gains electrons to form mercury and chloride ions so it's just the reverse of what we saw when it acts as an anode so, but the second reaction becomes first and the first reaction becomes the second and it's a reverse reaction okay and the electrode representation or half cell representation also is opposite because now in the left hand side we are having mercurous chloride so you have mercurous chloride and kcl saturated solution and the right hand side we have mercury in the liquid form mercury for electrical contact we are using platinum this is how we represent the half cell and now we see how to calculate or how we are using the calomel electrode to determine the standard electrode potential of other electrodes so one we take which is having lower standard reduction potential than ACE and other example we'll take which has a higher standard reduction potential than ACE so here when we take zinc the standard uh, saturated calomel electrode acts as a cathode and zinc acts as an anode and it is connected to a potentiometer as I said before the side uh, tube itself acts as a salt bridge we don't require another salt bridge so this is the zinc electrode and in the potentiometer we get a reading and that value is 1.0022 volts and E cell is equal to E cathode minus E anode this is not the standard reduction potential values that not above so we can by this we are calculating the standard reduction potential of zinc and it comes to minus 0 0.76 which is same as what we calculated using standard hydrogen electrode that's why we can use this as a reference electrode so when we couple it with copper SE acts as an anode and copper acts as a cathode and we see that the side tube acts as the um, uh, salt bridge and the value in the potentiometer is 0 0.0978 and using this E cell value we calculate E cathode cathode is zinc uh, uh, copper and anode is SE so the standard uh, reduction potential of SE is 0 0.2422 and we calculated this way and we get the standard reduction potential of copper as 0 0.34 so it's very very useful and common reference electrode used in laboratories is saturated calomel electrode and we have a lot of advantages because it's acting as a reference electrode we can use it to determine the single electrode potential and this emf value is constant and it is easily reproducible and it's very cheap compact and easy to transport the only maintenance work it's easy to construct and also to maintain why easy to construct is uh, you can see that although we have shown the actual elaborative diagram of saturated calomel electrode the ready to use uh, calomel electrodes are available in the markets which is even more simpler than this which we can even carry in a pocket okay and uh, the way we need to maintain it is once in a month or once in two months if we are using it continuously from the side tube we can add little of kcl crystals so that it maintains to be a saturated kcl solution that is all is required for the maintenance of the cell but the limitations if you look at the solubility solubility of kcl changes with temperature so we need to take care of the temperature because the standard potential value is the temp um, uh, electrode potential measured at 25 degrees centigrade so the kcl uh, solubility changes so the temperature has to be uh, maintained otherwise slightly the emf value will differ from what we are actually measuring so that's all for the session let us meet in another session until then bye bye uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and tap the like button if you like the video and drop in your comments thank you bye bye